Hello guys, this is Sam Presto from Sam Presto Films and today I'm going to be discussing how you can use Red 2 app to achieve a great and awesome result when you're shooting with a Red camera. You don't have to have this great idea about Red camera when you're using this app. With this app, you can actually shoot like a professional using Red camera. So I'm introducing you to this app today and you will thank me later when you start using this app. Okay, not to waste your time, let's just go straight to it. Now, this is the red app, it's called Red 2, and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six menus here. The first menu is the crop factor, the second one is the recording time, the third one is the flickering flicker. The third one is the flicker free video. The fourth one is the depth of field. The fifth one is the panning speed. And the sixth one is the exposure. I'm going to be taking them one after the other. How to use it when you're shooting and it will make your shoots very smooth. You shoot like a pro. Now let's start with the crop factor. Okay, this is the crop factor here. Okay, this is the cameras. You can come over here, select the cameras you're using. Let's say we are using Red Dragon. 35 millimeter still frame of the red so and i'm shooting on i'm shooting on 5k i'm shooting on 5k with my lens is 24 mm my focal length so this is what i will actually get this place so where you are seeing the red that is where my camera will be seen so the crop factor is much compared to when you're using the moisture. So, and this is the result. My crop factor is 1.49 and my equivalent focal length is 35.9. Meaning that if I'm using 24 and I'm shooting on Red Dragon 5K, it's equivalent to using a lens of 35.9. So it's equivalent to using 35. So if I'm going to use 24, that means I should be looking at 14. So if I'm using 24, just have it in mind you're using 35. So the dimension is this and the image resolution is this. So let me switch to 35. If you're using 35 mm lens, the crop factor, the equivalent will be like 50 mm and it will be 50 point, 52.3 mm. So now let's imagine we are using a different camera. We are now using Red Moisture 8K. So if I'm using TAT5 on Red Moisture 8K, the crop factor is 0.93 and the equivalent is 32.7. So it's even wider than my normal 35. So it's at this point I'm getting a full frame, which is this. It's giving me from this red you can see it it's giving me a wider angle so at 35 what i'm getting i'm getting more than 35 mm i'm getting 32 mm because it's a full frame right now so the crop sensor is 0 0.93 so i think that is all about the crop sensor so now let's move to recording time this side is really very key if you're doing a long project. Your recording time is key. You, with this, you can calculate the amount of hard drive you use. If you're DIT, if you're recording, if you're copying, backing up, you know the amount of time and hard drive you use. So now let's come to this. This is how it works. If I'm using, let me use the Red Dragon 5K because that's the camera I always use here. So if I'm shooting on Red Dragon, the dragon and I'm shooting I'm using let me come to the resolution I'm shooting on 5k the 5k full format 5k <clears throat> so I'm shooting my frame rate is 25 frames and I'm using the red speed the reduced rate speed, the one, the 480 gigabytes. That's what I'm using. And it's 
for it here so I can't change this again let me change this to 480 gigabytes okay now if I'm shooting with the red dragon and my speed is 480 my hard drive my red card is 480 gigabytes I'm shooting at the resolution of 5k 25 frames and I'm shooting okay my compression let me switch the compression 8.1 is good let me okay let's leave it on 8.1 my compression is on 8.1 red code then I'm shooting 25 frames my time of shoot it will be recorded average data rate will be 66 MB per second and for that 480 gigabytes my recording time will be 123 minutes that's like two hours so with this i already know that this card will last me for the next two hours two hours so i know after two hours i should be ready what if i'm doing a continuous shoot but if i'm cutting and i'm shooting so i know that i have two hours and now for every two hours i have 480 gig to cater for so i can calculate the space i'm going to be using at the end of the day if i'm going to if i shot for like four hours that means 480 plus 480 which will be giving me 920 gig so with this you can calculate the space your time your recording timing and the space you're going to be shooting on so with this it will save you a whole lot of time so i think this is well understood let's go to the next menu which is the flicker free video so this one here is very easy to understand depending most time depending on the country i have a video tutorial i did on frame rates if you watch that my video you can click on the description to watch it if you watch that video you understand this with ease if you're in a different region a different country and you don't want to record a flickering video use this so when you click on the flicker free video this is what it does <clears throat> to you this north america system has so if you're like you're in north america you use 50 has if you're here you use if you're in europe and asia and africa you use 50 has north america and america you use 60 has so now this is what it's going to do to you if you're in let's say we are in africa we are europe africa we are using 50 has if i'm shooting on frame rates let me put it at 25 frames if i'm shooting on 25 frames i'm in nigeria it's showing me safe shorter angles use any corresponding shutter speed use any so i'm not going to have any flicker shooting on 25 frames i'm going to use any but if i just decide to switch and i want to shoot maybe i want to do slow-mo i say i want to shoot 72 so at 72 frames i'm going to have problem with a flickering video so now what this app is going to do for you is to tell you the shutter speed that will be safe for you at 72 frames so that your video will not flicker so what we you do is go to shutter speed that will be safe it's showing me 259.2 so if you go to 259.2 the shutter speed will be safe or you put it on 100 1 over 100 depending on what is showing on your camera you will have a free flickering video so in case you switch to 30 frames too it's showing at 30 frames you can use 100 you can use 50 you can use 33.3 seconds or on the shorter angle you can use 108 you can use 216 you can use 324 so with this you have a very clean freaking video if anytime you're changing frame rates just come here dial in the frame rate and check depending on the region if you're in nigeria europe and everything if you're in america you switch it to america and this way you know the safe shorter angle to shoot to avoid flickering videos so let's go to the next menu which is the depth of feed okay talking about depth of feed let's go to depth of feed now let's the default setting is usually red most so let's switch it to red dragon this on any of this depending on the camera you're using that's what you impute here so i use red dragon let me put it on red dragon red dragon 5k switch it to 5k 
drag on 5k now my depth of field this is how it works if i'm shooting with lens let me say my lens is 2.8 i'm shooting with a lens that have the aperture is 2.8 and my focal length i'm using an 85 mm lens so at 50 feet i can change it to meters for us that is here so let's change it to 16 feet or it's still 10, 20 feet that's 20, 20 20 meters sorry we are using meters now so it's on 20 meters red dragon 5k our lens is 8.2.8 then our lens our lens aperture is 2.8 and our lens is 85 mm so now look at this place <clears throat> Your nearest sharpness is at 17.5 meters. Your farthest sharpness is at 23.24 meters. Total depth of field at 5.6 meters. Total depth of field. So now if I'm shooting with 25 mm, <coughs> with 85 mm, and my f-stop is 2.8, so I already know that guy and i place the person at 20 meters i already know that you cannot move anything um, above 23 point something meters you cannot move come closer to me at 17 meters so i know the range my surface range where i know i'm still on focus so that's what this helps you to do now let's change the lens let's put the f-stop to let's make it wider let's put it on 5.6 so at 5.6, this is what happens. 15 meters, we are still good. And at 27 meters, we are still good. Depth of feed, 12 meters before it starts getting blurry. So with this, it helps you to know the lens you're using in case you are going to be moving and you don't have a focus pull on anything. You know the distance you're going to move and everything, or you want to achieve those maximum depth, you know the and the f-stop you're going to be using on red to achieve it. let's assume we go to 1.4 at 1.4 we are not going to move a lot then at 1.5 80 meters c my nearest the meter is 20 meters why my father sharpness is 21 my nearest is 18.7 so i know that i'm not really going to move so i think you got this and let's move to the next one which is <clears throat> the panning speed panning speed now i'm going to be explaining this if i'm using the same red dragon here you can always depend on the camera you're using that's what you're going to impute if i'm using red dragon and i'm shooting on the same 5k 5k is it 5k this is a little bit tricky we don't really do it here but let me still talk about it and i'm shooting with 50 mm and my frame rate is 25 my panning angle okay and i'm shooting at 90 i'm going to be panning at 90 degree like this for me not to have this we see it in camera a lot when you pan the jordan effect when you pan that it breaks the bit for you not to have that effect so this is the safest if you're shooting at 50 we are shooting with a 50 mm and 25 frame and you're going to be panning at 90 degrees this is the suggested duration your pan everything from here to here should take you up to 21 seconds to pan that's the only way to be free from those effects and suggested panning speed you should pan at least 4.3 seconds like you go slow but it should take you up to but this is for automated uh, panning most time is for automated panning where you have this robot bot robot that pans and everything for automated panning that's where they impute all these settings are you for using your hand i don't know how you're going to measure the seconds but it's still good to guide you and everything so let's move to the next one now the last one here which is the exposure exposure this is <clears throat> this is really key if you're using two cameras you're using two red that is of different make of different lenses and you still want to 
get your exposure to be the same or you're shooting on a frame like 25 frame and you now decide to take a slow mode definitely your exposure will be darker so now how do you match your exposure with what you've shot before it's easy this is what you do you come to your old setting and your new setting there's an old setting here there's a new setting here so when you come to old setting let's assume we are shooting on this we are shooting on the old setting at 25 frames this is 25 frames and i'm shooting at i'm shooting at my aperture is at 60 and my lens <clears throat> is on two stop my lens is two stop so and i decide to use i decide to shoot a slow mo then i come here this is a new setting then now i'm switching my frame rate to 72 to achieve a slow mo and my degree so i put it back to i'm shooting assist than my f stop now look at the exposure difference it showed me minus 1.5 so now the key here is to make my old settings and my new settings amount to zero or close to zero. Now if it's on zero here, that means my exposure from my old setting and my new setting on my new camera is giving almost the same exposure. So and if I don't need to add more light or something. So this is minus ISO. You don't need ISO for this because ISO, if you're shooting with red ISO, you can always tweak your ISO on the post to say raw settings. So, but this has to do with just your aperture and your shutter. So now what do I do to compensate my new setting that I'm shooting on 72 frames is to maybe let's try doing it. Let me, I can change the lens, use the lens of lower aperture of maybe 1.4. 1.4 is close. So I'm having minus 0 0.5, which is very, very close. What else can I do? I can tweak my shutter and take my shutter to 90. So I'm having zero. Before I had minus 0 0.5. So I'm having 0 0.09 now. I think this is very close to zero. So this works better than, than using than the minus. So I think increasing the aperture to 90 and my f-stop now to 1.4 works. But let's assume you don't have another lens and you're still using the same lens that is 2, 2. So let's put it on 2. So that means I have to tweak, I have to compensate with my shutter. So let's go back to shutter and I took my shutter to 180. So with 180, I have it's closer to what is it called? It's closer to zero than before. So my old setting here, I have my shutter to be 60 and my frame rate to be 25 and my lens is still the same too. But now my new setting. 180 and my frame rate is 72 and my s stop is 2 so instead of leaving the setting to be 60 which there will be a lot of different which would have been my exposure different would have been minus 1.3 so i used the shutter to compensate i brought the shutter to 180 which gave my exposure different to be 0 0.06 with this is almost you cannot notice this you cannot even Say the difference with your normal eye so this is really cool and i use it too i use it when i'm switching my what is it called if i'm shooting on slow mo i use it to compensate for the light in case i don't want to add more light i just use it and die i know what i will need to do tweak to achieve what i want so i hope you enjoy this app if you don't have it yet go to your app store go to your uh, play store and download it is it comes handy red red to dice in them and you will thank me later so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial hit like subscribe and also tell a friend to watch the video and i will see you on the next video and this is sam presto from sam presto films signing out thank you